Al Mitchell United Methodist Church and Christ the King Sunday and also Thanksgiving Sunday. How many are ready for Thanksgiving? Ready. How many are ready for that coma after the lunch? <laughs> <laughs> that tryptophan induced sleep. And then on the 1st of January, we make those resolutions not to eat so much. <laughs> Are there any announcements this morning? After service, anybody that can go up and help bring down the Christmas decorations, because we're decorating tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and... Next Sunday, have any toys you want to bring for the, the Christmas thing, the, uh, the toy drive we did by next time. And there's a box downstairs, and I don't know if there's one back there, but I know there's one downstairs. Any others? Betty Bean had a surgery Tuesday. Who is? Betty Bean. Betty Bean. prayers will continue to be with you and Brother Steve. Any others? I heard 61 years yesterday. What? Anniversary. Anniversary. 61 years. Ask the witness saying too much, that might be the reason they made it 61 years. <laughs> oh, congratulations. That is certainly something to celebrate. Anything else? It's good to see Shelby, who came through her surgery well this past week. Are there any others? Then let us please stand as the light of Christ enters our midst.
And if you're able, and join with us in singing hymn number 694. 694. Come ye thankful people, come.
Are there any joys or prayer concerns this morning? Uh, Billy Cook had to go to the hospital with his sister, who has developed a blood clot in her lung. So that's why Billy isn't here this morning. And also his friend who has been having some, I think it's hip problems, that they've been caring for. His brother, his father, his father, Jane, 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 Jane Fox. And um, we'd like to lift up the Sinclair family, who, is, who are the in-laws of my brother. Um, his sister, my brother's sister, all had a, a stroke yesterday. We'd like to lift them up. And the Jones family, who is Mallory's aunt and her extended family, who are just having a, everybody in the family. Yeah, they all got COVID, even though they had the shot. Yeah, everybody got COVID, and, anyway. and it's just been a bad situation. So. Uh, my nephew Chris, he was in an accident last week. He had surgery this week. He had shattered his hip, so he has a rod from his hip to his knee. So please keep him in prayer for Fassi. And he is a former drug addict, so he cannot take any narcotics for Fassi. So he's been in a lot of pain this week. Just keep him in prayer. Just want to say on behalf of my family, um, thanks to everyone for prayers and support. I do my mom's passion. And our prayers are still with you. Yes, my grandson, Jake, 16, broke his ankle yesterday. He's in a lot of pain right now. He had surgery in the next week or so. So that's been a tough week for the choir law. <laughs> Any others? Yes, sir. Um, my brother, brother-in-law passed away yesterday, uh, Melvin Pegram, so the prayers for the Pegram family. Any others? Michelle Burke. Michelle Burke. Any others? This continued healing for Janice and for Shelby. Yes, yes. Any others? Pray for me. It seems like my throat is wanting to tighten up a little bit right now. So. Any others? If you have an unspoken request that you'd still like to give to God, let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, it's been a tough week. But Lord, we know that you've been there with us. And in knowing this, we know we can truly surrender all. Let us pray. Father, thank you for another day. In this season of Thanksgiving. Father, we could go on and on and on about the things that we are thankful for and the things that we should be thankful for. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for our families. Thank you for this place of worship. Thank you for the people who gather in this place of worship. Thank you for your healing touch that we have seen so many times in our lives. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being there in the midst of loss. We lift up all the families that have lost loved ones, the Johnson family. Remind Steve that you will always be there. I'm sure he knows that, Lord. For those that have come through surgery, we give you praise, Father, and ask that you continue to give them a speedy recovery and remind them that you're with them every step of the way. For those that are facing surgery, remind us that you're with us every step of the way. For those who have shattered hips, for those who have COVID, remind us that you are the great physician and thank you, Father, for being just that, the great physician. And we call on you. Move, heal, guide surgeons' hands, and accomplish 
your will. Now, Father, all these petitions, whether they were spoken or unspoken, we claim them all done by praying in the manner in which your Son taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen please stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith with the apostles creed located on page 881 I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. list 
list here that I want to read at the top tier. Uh, from our church, though, we have people that are thankful for Christ's salvation. We have people that are thankful for our country, for Pastor Joel and Ruth, for freedom, for good food, for our church, for our military and our veterans, and then this person put church in a community is the backbone that truly represents Christ in the community. And I think we all believe that. And for our forefathers who built this church, and that's what people have put in the basket. And a lot of those fall in with the list I'm going to read of the top ten things. Okay. Uh, first of all, Psalm 104. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. And here is top ten. Somebody's top ten, but these were a lot of mine. Uh, I'm thankful for my house. There are many people in this world today who have no place to live. Many of them sleep on park benches and under bridges. Food. We always have plenty of food to eat at our house. Many people don't. Every day as I drive home from work, I see people standing beside the road holding a sign that says, We'll work for food. I'm thankful for clothes. I never have to worry about whether there will be clothes in my closet for me to put on each day. Many people only have the clothes that they are wearing. Health. I am thankful that I am blessed with good health. Many people have a serious illness which keeps them from enjoying a full and happy life. My country. I am thankful that I live in a country where I enjoy great freedom. In many countries, you don't have much freedom. In some countries, you can be put in prison or even put to death for talking and telling others about Jesus. For teachers, I am thankful for the teachers that I have had in school and in church who have taught me the things I needed to know to live a happy and successful life. I am thankful for friends. I am thankful for my many friends. In times of trouble, I have always had friends who were there to help me. Family, I am thankful for my family. God has given me a wonderful husband, children, grandchildren, as well as many other family members who I love very much. Parents, I am thankful that God blessed me with wonderful parents who loved me, cared for me, and taught me about Jesus and his love. And number one, I am thankful for Jesus. Jesus is number one on my list of things for which I am thankful for. No one ever loved me like Jesus. He loved me so much that he was willing to die on a cross so that I could have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. And today, and I'd like for the little ones to help me if they can, I have a little something for everybody in the church. And it's just a little chocolate candy bar. And it says, thank you for all y'all do. I would like to thank Ann for her work on the altar 
up here. Look beautiful.
No gave a chocoholic two chocolate bars. <laughs> one for me, one for my wife. I will do my best for both of them and make it across the street. Now, you know we'll ask if she got hers. You know we'll ask her if she got hers. I had to go and say something. <laughs> we will tell them. There's extra in the basket. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Stop giving that out, don't <laughs> Also, please, I, I forgot during prayer time to pray for my wife. She's not well this morning. She's having a bout with gout. So, her foot's swollen and she's hurting. So. And amongst all that, I'm going to take her down to run around with a three-year-old, or almost three-year-old. This morning, we're going to talk about glory and dominion <clears throat> forever. Be reading Revelation 1, 4 through 8. Be reading the New King James Version. Again, Revelation 1, 4 through 8. Revelation 1, 4 through 8. And I'll give you just a minute to find it. <clears throat> Again, Revelation 1, 4 through 8, the New King James Version. As you are able, let us please stand at the reading of God's Word. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him and they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. Again, today is Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. As well as Thanksgiving week. <clears throat> it's also the Sunday before Advent begins. It begins next Sunday. Now if you try to, to follow the Christian calendar year. And have your devotional life tied to these seasonal things. Well you've got a lot to think about right now. And you might be thinking, how can we possibly tie all these images here together? Well, perhaps our text this morning will do just that. But in order to, to think this through, we're going to have to put time away. Yeah, I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, my goodness. We're going to be here at 1 o'clock. Usually when preachers tell us to forget about time, the badness beat us to the buffet. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about earthly time. Let's not think about earthly time. Let's think in terms of eternity. But I do truly want us to put time on the back burner. I want us to, to try to see time as God sees time in terms of eternity. I've heard some pastors and other folks describe it as watching a parade from a helicopter. 
You can see from beginning to end. And this is how God sees things. From beginning to end. And this explains our text. The Lord God who is, who was, and is to come. The Almighty. Now this phrase appears twice. The God who was, who is, and is still to come. Now whenever you hear something twice in the Bible, that's the key to, to write it down in ink. So you can't erase it. It's, it's a clue to, to memorize it. It's a clue to live by it every single day. It's repeated because it's important. <clears throat> now, let's get into the Word. Into the Word, we find that Christ is identified by three titles. First of all, He's called a faithful witness. Oh, and getting back to me telling you to forget about time, and you might be afraid that it's going to be a long message. Actually, it's very short. I know we stayed long last week, so I'm giving you a break this week. Jesus is called a faithful witness. Now the Greek word for witness is martus. And from that word we get the word martyr. And this connection, this use of this word is not by chance. In the early church a faithful witness usually ended up a martyr. Jesus is titled as, as the faithful witness because He chose God's plan of redemption and victory over sin. And He was killed for it. But the faithful witness wasn't just in, in the time of the first century Palestine. It began in eternity. Forever in heaven. Jesus is, was, and will always be the faithful witness. Jesus is also, also given the title firstborn of the dead. Now, Jesus was not the first to be resurrected. We know that, right? You do know that. In the Old Testament, Prophets and, and even some during the crucifixion. Some of the prophets came out of their graves temporarily. And well, Jesus even raised Lazarus from the dead. But here's the difference. All of them died again. Jesus was the first to be raised from the dead. Never to die again. And this is often referred to as first fruits. And the first in a harvest is, is seen to be a promise to the others. He was the first born of the dead, the first to be resurrected, never to die again. And we can have that same promise as followers of Jesus Christ, as Christians. We can have that same promise to be resurrected once again, never to die again. There's an old saying that says if you're born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you only die once. The third title is ruler of kings of the earth. The title reminds immediately of this title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is supreme among all the leaders of every age. And that is without question. John writes that glory and dominion are to be given to Christ. The first risen fruits. Now if this is so, then we are thinking in terms of eternity. Then when does... Glory and dominion begin. I'm giving you something to think about. 
If we're thinking in terms of eternity, then when does glory and dominion begin? Actually, the phrase is glory and dominion forever. But what I'm really asking you is when does eternity start? This is the interactive part. When does eternity start? It, when does eternity... There is no beginning to eternity. It's a trick question. There is no beginning to eternity. It always has been. And it always will be. No beginning. No end. That's the reason that figure eight on its side is used. There's no beginning. No end. It stands for eternity. Now, but we as human beings, we seem to, we, well, we always think in a linear direction. We think in the likeness of now is earlier than later. Up is higher than down. Old comes after young. I'm finding that out very quickly. But that's our thinking. It's lineal. But God sees eternally. So again, I'm going to ask you, when does forever begin? It doesn't. It always has been. Doesn't begin. Always has been. Always will be. So the reign of Christ has always been and always will be and it's already among us. Christ the King is already among us. And his advent was just so that he could fellowship with us. He always has been. Always will be. And the reasons for thanksgiving, for our thanksgiving, are so many that it will take eternity to offer up our praise and glory to the one who has dominion. I heard some of the things that folks are thankful for. And I can echo those same thoughts. I'm thankful for another day. I'm thankful for my family, my wife, my daughter, yeah, even my son-in-law. My grandson, who now when I walk in, hey, Papa. But y'all know that feeling you get when the grandchildren do that. But most of all, I am thankful for eternity and where I will spend it. As long as I walk this path hand in nail scarred hand, I know where my forever is. All because of the ruler. All because of the king of kings. All because of that faithful witness all because of the firstborn of the dead, all because of Christ Jesus. I know where my forever is. There's also the comfort of John's message. There are three realities about the message that John delivers here. First, there is the last word of the text, Almighty. This tells us that, that God is in charge. Did you hear that? God is in charge. He sees from beginning to end. There's no question that He is in charge from creation until eternity. Second of all, in the middle of the text it says that He loved us enough to free us with the sacrifice of His own life. To cleanse us from our sinful condition. And He calls us to be a kingdom. He calls us to be His people. He calls us to be His church. He doesn't call us to be Methodist, Pentecostal, Holiness, Church of God. He calls us to be His children. Regardless of what the sign says out front. He's calling us Together to, to be priests unto God. 
calling all nations and all peoples to Him and to let them know one day He's coming back. Thirdly, from the beginning of the text, we find that, that grace and peace are His gifts. Peace comes from the grace of God. And wherever the true grace of God is present, there is reason to have peace. A pastor once told this following story. He said, more than 20 years ago, he was walking down the street with his youngest daughter, who was only at the time about five or six. He said, some aggressive dogs began a, a very threatening advance toward them. His daughter became very frightened and she tensed and his, her hand grabbed his like a vice grip. And the father said that I put myself between the dogs and her and told her, relax. Nothing's going to happen. And nothing did. We simply continue our walk. I didn't have that problem when my daughter was little. We had a big Doberman that would walk with us. So we didn't worry about much. But isn't that the way God's grace is? It provides us peace. I've told you this and I will tell you again when I gave you the message about my diagnosis. The last song that we sang that Sunday was God will take care of you. And a peace washed over me. That's God's grace. His glory and dominion is standing between me and all the things that, that tend to make me worry. Sickness, finances, health, what the well-being of my family. They're nothing more than snarling, toothless dogs when I'm walking hand in nail-scarred hand with my elder brother Jesus. And together, we're walking this path to the Father's house. This Thursday, I'm going to have plenty to be thankful about. I'm going to be giving lots of thanksgiving. And it won't be just for the turkey, ham, and all the other good stuff. It'll be because of His grace and His peace. And let the church say it. Amen. As you are able, stand and turn with me and sing... Hymn number 716. Rejoice, the Lord is King. 716. Pastor Joel, I believe we know the tune to 715, which is the same hymn. 715.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. And let the church say,